What is the recommended compression to ventilation ratio for two rescuer infant CPR? A. 15 colon 2. B. 30 colon 2. C. 5 colon 1. D. 20 colon 2. Answer. A. For infants and children with two rescuers, the recommended compression to ventilation ratio is 15 to 2 to ensure adequate oxygenation and perfusion. What is the first priority in the pediatric assessment triangle? A. Circulation to skin. B. Breathing. C. Work of breathing. D. Appearance. Answer. D. Appearance is assessed first in the pediatric assessment triangle as it reflects brain perfusion and oxygenation, giving quick insight into the child's overall condition. Which of the following rhythms is most common in pediatric cardiac arrest? A. Ventricular fibrillation. B. Asystole. C. Bradycardia. D. Pulseless electrical activity, PA. Answer. B. Asystole is most common in pediatric cardiac arrest because arrests usually result from prolonged respiratory failure, leading to severe hypoxia and eventual heart stoppage. What is the most likely cause of bradycardia in a pediatric patient? A. Hyperkalemia. B. Respiratory failure. C. Congenital heart block. D. Hypothermia. Answer. B. Bradycardia in pediatric patients is frequently caused by hypoxia due to respiratory failure, making immediate oxygen support critical. What is the preferred site for intraosseous access in children? A. Proximal tibia. B. Sternum. C. Distal femur. D. Humeral head. Answer. A. The proximal tibia is the most common and accessible site for IO access in children, especially during emergency resuscitation. Which drug is indicated for pediatric bradycardia with poor perfusion? A. Adenosine. B. Epinephrine. C. Amiodarone. D. Lidocaine. Answer. B. Epinephrine is the drug of choice for bradycardia in children when accompanied by signs of poor perfusion after oxygenation and ventilation. What is the first step in managing a child with a foreign body airway obstruction who is unresponsive? A. Give back blows. B. Deliver abdominal thrusts. C. Attempt blind finger sweep. D. Start chest compressions. Answer. D. If a child becomes unresponsive, CPR should be initiated immediately starting with chest compressions to dislodge the object and restore circulation. What is the initial dose of epinephrine in pediatric cardiac arrest? A. 0.1 mg per kilogram. B. 0.01 mg per kilogram. C. 0.001 mg per kilogram. D. 1 mg per kilogram. Answer. B. The initial 4-slash-IO dose of epinephrine in pediatric cardiac arrest is 0.01 mg per kilogram of a 1 to 10 000 concentration every 3 to 5 minutes. What is the best method to confirm endotracheal tube placement in a pediatric patient? A. Chest rise. B. Auscultation. C. Colorimetric CO2 detector. D. Visual inspection. Answer, C. Capnography or a colorimetric CO2 detector provides the most reliable confirmation of endotracheal tube placement during resuscitation. Which of the following is part of the pediatric BLS sequence? A. Look, listen, and feel. B. Start with ventilation. C. Activate EMS after 2 minutes of CPR. D. Check for a pulse for up to 20 seconds. Answer, C. A lone rescuer should provide 2 minutes of CPR before activating EMS to prioritize oxygenation and circulation in pediatric patients. Which rhythm would most likely require defibrillation in a pediatric arrest? A. Pulseless electrical activity. B. Ventricular fibrillation. C. Asystole. 
D. Bradycardia. Answer, B. Ventricular fibrillation is a shockable rhythm and requires immediate defibrillation to improve survival chances in cardiac arrest. What does poor perfusion in a pediatric patient typically look like? A. Warm skin and strong pulses. B. Rapid capillary refill. C. Cool extremities and weak pulses. D. Bounding pulses and flushed skin. Answer, C. Signs of poor perfusion include cool, mottled skin and diminished peripheral pulses, indicating inadequate circulation. A child with a heart rate of 40 BPM, poor perfusion, and no response to oxygen should receive. A. Atropine. B. CPR. C. Defibrillation. D. Lidocaine. Answer, B. Bradycardia with signs of poor perfusion is treated with immediate chest compressions to restore circulation, even before medications. What is the maximum defibrillation dose for a pediatric patient? A. 2J slash KG. B. 4J slash KG. C. 10J slash KG. D. 6J slash KG. Answer, C. The maximum recommended defibrillation dose for pediatric patients is 10J slash KG, but the initial dose is usually 2 to 4J slash KG. Which of the following should be checked during the C part of the ABCDE assessment? A. Work of breathing. B. Capillary refill time. C. Skin turgor. D. Mental status. Answer, B. During the circulation assessment, capillary refill time is an important indicator of perfusion and cardiovascular function. What is the recommended respiratory rate for an infant? A. 10 to 20 breaths slash min. B. 30 to 60 breaths slash min. C. 60 to 90 breaths slash min. D. 12 to 24 breaths slash min. Answer, B. The normal respiratory rate for an infant is 30 to 60 breaths per minute, any significant deviation requires evaluation. Which of the following is most likely to cause shock in children? A. Cardiac tamponade. B. Hypovolemia. C. Myocardial infarction. D. Tension pneumothorax. Answer, B. Hypovolemic shock, usually from dehydration or bleeding, is the most common cause of shock in pediatric patients. Which oxygen delivery device is preferred for a child with mild respiratory distress? A. Nasal cannula. B. Bag valve mask. C. Endotracheal tube. D. Non-rebreather mask. Answer, A. A nasal cannula provides supplemental oxygen comfortably and is appropriate for children with mild distress. Which parameter best indicates the effectiveness of ventilation? A. Chest wall movement. B. Pulse oximetry. C. End tidal CO2. D. Heart rate. Answer, C. End tidal CO2, capnography, provides real-time feedback on ventilation effectiveness and airway placement. In a PALS algorithm, after epinephrine administration and CPR, what comes next if there's no improvement? A. Atropine. B. Reassess rhythm. C. Administer sodium bicarbonate. D. Apply cold packs. Answer, B. The rhythm should be reassessed every two minutes to determine if further shocks or medication are needed based on the rhythm. What is the initial energy dose for defibrillation in a pediatric patient with pulseless VT? A. 6J slash KG. B. 1J slash KG. C. 4J slash KG. D. 2J slash KG. Answer, D. The recommended initial energy dose for defibrillation in children with pulseless ventricular tachycardia is 2J slash KG, followed by 4J slash KG for subsequent shocks. What is the preferred method to open the airway of an unresponsive child without suspected trauma? A. Head tilt, chin lift. B. 
Jaw thrust. C. Tongue sweep. D. Rescue breathing. Answer, A. Head tilt, chin lift is used to open the airway in an unresponsive child unless trauma is suspected, in which case the jaw thrust is preferred. What is the recommended dose of epinephrine for pediatric cardiac arrest? A. 0.1 mg per kilogram IM. B. 0.01 mg per kilogram 4 slash IO. C. 0.1 mg per kilogram 4 slash IO. D. 1 mg per kilogram 4. Answer, B. The correct epinephrine dose for pediatric cardiac arrest is 0.01 mg per kilogram, 0.1 ml per kilogram of 1 to 10, 0, 0, 0 concentration, administered 4 or IO every 3 to 5 minutes. Which sign is an early indicator of respiratory distress in infants? A. Nasal flaring. B. Bradycardia. C. Cyanosis. D. Decreased LOC. Answer, A. Nasal flaring, along with grunting and retractions, is an early sign of respiratory distress in infants and signals increased work of breathing. What should be done immediately after delivering a shock during pediatric CPR? A. Check for a pulse. B. Resume chest compressions. C. Assess breathing. D. Deliver rescue breaths only. Answer, B. After defibrillation, high-quality chest compressions should be resumed immediately without checking for a pulse to maintain circulation. What is the compression-to-ventilation ratio for two rescuer CPR in a child? A. 15 colon 2. B. 30 colon 2. C. 5 colon 1. D. 20 colon 2. Answer, A. For two rescuer pediatric CPR, the compression to ventilation ratio is 15 to 2 to provide more frequent ventilations due to higher oxygen demand in children. Which of the following rhythms is shockable in pediatric cardiac arrest? A. Asystole. B. P. C. Ventricular fibrillation. D. Sinus tachycardia. Answer, C. Ventricular fibrillation is one of the two shockable rhythms in pediatric cardiac arrest, the other is pulseless ventricular tachycardia. What is the first priority in managing a child with a suspected foreign body airway obstruction and poor air exchange? A. Give abdominal thrusts. B. Start chest compressions. C. Suction the airway. D. Encourage the child to cough. Answer, A. If poor air exchange is present in a child, abdominal thrusts, Heimlich maneuver, are indicated to relieve the obstruction. In PALS, what does disability assessment focus on in the ABCD approach? A. Neurologic status. B. Chest wall movement. C. Capillary refill. D. Airway obstruction. Answer, A. Disability assessment focuses on neurologic function using AVPU or pediatric GCS to detect altered mental status or potential brain injury. Which medication is indicated for treating bradycardia in a pediatric patient with poor perfusion despite oxygen and ventilation? A. Adenosine. B. Amiodaron. C. Atropine. D. Epinephrine. Answer, D. Epinephrine is the first-line drug for symptomatic bradycardia in children when oxygenation and ventilation are not effective. It increases heart rate and perfusion.